Good morning and welcome back to my channel and morning devotions. My name is Maggie. If this is your first time stopping by, I do hope that you decide to like and subscribe and click that notification bell so you can be notified whenever I upload any new content. Uh, our devotions are coming from Brenda Kuhneman's book called The Daily Prophecy. And our devotion, it is uh, Wednesday, February the 9th. And our devotion today is entitled, A Room Prepared. Let's hear the prophetic word. I am preparing you as a room for my spirit. So dwell, to dwell and manifest in power. What is wrong with my reading today? Yes, the anointing is preparing you to bring the meat of my table to the nations of the world and you will bring my wonders to many lost souls for I have prepared you for this time. Now if you're like me, immediately I'm thinking bring the word to the world. I that just seems beyond my capability. But let's hear the scripture and go and see how Brenda expounds on this. Mark 14:15 is our scripture. And he will show you a large upper room, furnished and prepared. There, make ready for us. Of course, that I think is referring to the Last Supper. Let's hear how Brenda expounds on this. The upper room was more than just a physical location. It had prophetic significance. It was, there, it was where Jesus shared communion with the disciples and a preparation place for the coming of the Holy Spirit. In Acts 1, we find the people gathered there anticipating the arrival of God's Spirit. Every believer should be an upper room believer. That means we make our spirit a preparation place for the Holy Spirit's presence. Does that make sense? Okay. We prepare our upper room by making our heart a place of communion. That could be the literal communion meal, which is bread and wine and of course, or water, or juice. I usually use the grape juice, which is also referred to as wine. But that is an act of remembrance, remembering the sacrifice that Christ made with his broken body and the shedding of his blood. That is, you can do a further study, but you can have your own communion in your home by yourself, okay? But it is also a place of communion with the Father in prayer. Then, like the people in the book of Acts, we wait for the move of the Holy Spirit in our lives. The word wait in Acts 1-4 means to stand in a place of prayerful power of the Holy Spirit to be on your life. Oh, no, no, no. Sorry, I skipped a line. What is up with my reading today? I'm sorry, guys. The word wait in Acts 1-4 means to stand in a place of prayerful expectancy. In other words, you are doing whatever is necessary for the power of the Holy Spirit to be on your life. If you will commune with the Father and wait for the Holy Spirit this way, you will become an upper room believer prepared to bring the wonders of God to a dark and needy world. Okay, a lot to unpack there, but it's true. We do need to be as believers, and a lot of us have grown up in liturgical denominations that follow a Christian tradition. And that is going to church on Sunday, singing certain types of worship songs or hymns, going through certain rituals. I grew up Catholic, and so I, I know the rituals and the different things that you go through and that you're taught that's what you do as a Christian. This is what you have to do, you know, as a believer. But in your spirit, just as in my spirit, even as a young child, you realize that's just not enough. That's not relationship, that's religion, okay? And a spirit of religion has what has caused division in the body of Christ. You're not doing it the way I do it. Or our group is the only group that is doing it right. The rest of you are going to hell. I mean, literally, there are some denominations that believe that. 
that's not from the Lord. That is a human being. That is, that is a human creation. And the spirit that brings the division is not the Holy Spirit. That is a demonic spirit dividing the unity of the, of the body of Christ. I'm just going to say it plain. I'm not saying it to offend anybody because we all serve the same Lord. If we claim Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we are believers and Christians. And this is what I have found to be true. If your heart is turned toward your creator, your father God, with a desire to do things his way, he will correct any wrong teaching that you've embraced. 100%. I know that to be a fact. Not only did he do it in me as a very small child, he communicated with me the things I did not need to do that I was being taught that I should be doing, losing my leg. Um, with, with full confidence, but he's also done it in other religions, okay? During special times, Muslims, Buddhists, Hindus, they're having encounters with Jesus as they are worshiping or they are seeking to worship the one their religion has told them is the creator, but they're calling out to the creator and guess who's showing up? Jesus, they're having encounters. They're being transformed because he loves us all. Now we need to be in a place and believe you me, I understand the struggle and Lord, how am I ever going to have the time to be alone with you and you know the busyness of life and the change and the transform you know it's it's you have to come to a place of determination within yourself lord i need to follow you more you're going to have to show me how and when you take those steps of setting aside even if it's just 5 minutes i remember when i first started the disciplines of prayer uh it seemed like I was just throwing God a little nickel tip, you know, I mean, just, you know, not really giving him my, my, the time I needed. And I, I remember hearing someone say, see if you can tithe your time, give God a tithe of your time. We have 24 hours in a day, correct? That would be two hours and 40 minutes. That could be, where am I going to find that? Not necessarily all at once. If this is your relationship with the Lord, a lot of people say, oh, you got to get up before anyone else gets up, before the sun gets up and you have to spend your time. Some people are not morning people. Some people are better at night. Some people, this is your personal relationship with God. You need to say, Lord, I want to do this, but I, I don't know how. I need your help. I need you to show me. Enter in with a heart of expectancy. You're saying, Lord, I want to meet you. Now come meet me and expect it. Say, teach me to hear you. My sheep hear my voice. Ask the Lord, help me to hear and distinguish your voice. Those are things that he desires of us. And then tell him, search my heart and show me the wicked things in me. Show me the things in me that need to change. Guess what? He's going to show you. He's going to show you. You're going to begin to then feel regret for being prideful, feel regret for being dismissive. You know, those things in you that are not pleasing to him. He'll show you lovingly, gently, but also very firmly, this has to change. He'll begin to do that. And you'll find that as you are entering in and lifting up things in prayer, even if it's just during the day, having your mind on Christ, uh, you're going to find those times with him are going to grow larger, longer. He wants that time with you. He wants what he had with Adam in the garden, Adam and Eve in the garden of Eden. That's what he wants. Okay. So you make room, make room and see what God does through you, especially as you start to hear him and listen as he begins to open doors and you recognize, wow, God just opened a door for me. Wow, God's given me his favor. You're going to see it. You're going to see it happen. You're going to be changed. Your family's going to be changed. And through that, your, your uh, body of believers you worship with is going to be changed. God can do all that because he loves you. He who began a good work in you is faithful to complete it. You just have to make sure your flesh man is not getting what it wants and your spirit man is being fed well. 
Let's pray the prayer. Dear Lord, I make my spirit a room for your spirit today. I open my heart so that I may manifest your anointing to the world. Prepare me as I wait for you. Teach me, Lord, how to commune with you in the upper room of my spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Thank you for spending a little bit of time with me today. I hope this has encouraged you. I hope that you feel challenged and hopeful. You don't have to be some big minister, some anointed pastor to have this kind of relationship with the Lord. That's what he wants. He wants you to come to him. God bless you. Thank you so much. And bye until next time.